Okay, so now we can continue moving along the rooftops here. Wolf said we'd be getting less enemy resistance, but there seems to be enemies on just about every rooftop, I think. Okay, so if we want, we can also head over to the other side of these stairs. Uh, there's an item box here that has yet another repair nano base. And they're still pretty generous with them. Uh, you can generally find them if you're in need, and you can carry five, so, you know, there should be plenty around. Okay, so now we've got a new enemy, this giant, like, really heavy cyborg with the hammer, so, you know, I guess technically these are the heavy cyborgs, not the blade guys I was talking about earlier. Oh, I got knocked out of the air. Uh, this one's also tough to do with no damage because of these guys flying around. I like to focus on them first. Once you take out both of them, another hammer guy will spawn. Uh, but I'd rather deal with two of them than just, you know, constantly getting hit by machine gun fire. Alright, they're kind of hiding behind the big guy. Oh. Yeah, and you can see the other hammer guy there in the distance. Okay, so now that it's just me and these two guys start taking them out. Some of their attacks, you can see, have that kind of orange aura. Orange, yellowish, whatever color you want to call that. Uh, which means that it actually can't be blocked. I'm going to kind of separate these two a bit because uh, with the two of them together, it can be a bit of a pain. So when you see them do the uh, orange aura, you basically just have to either get out of the way or use your dodge move. Uh, otherwise, we can basically just keep getting shots. And the good thing with these guys is that they uh, are actually quite slow. And you also can usually start chopping off limbs in this case, we can take out uh, both of his arms yeah, at once there. And you can see that kind of leaves him without the hammer. So, you know, what can he really do at this point? Also, chop off his leg if we want. And basically just start going to town. And once he's vulnerable. Oh, man, I messed that up. Not having too good a luck with Zen Dotsons here. Our combo is huge, though, I'll say that much. Yeah, and I, I believe the reason I actually wasn't getting the chance to do the execution move on him uh, whenever he was stunned is because my blade mode, my fuel cells actually weren't full. So I believe they have to be in order to do it. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, that's kind of my working theory at the moment, at least. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the case, actually. All right, and then we have, uh, this is probably the hardest still section in the game. Hey, you can see there's this dude uh, walking around here, so we got to kind of run up the steps and kill him. Whew, oh man, I'm glad we were able to do that, you know, so well to his approval. Uh, you can see, though, there is actually a helicopter kind of roaming around out there. It's not a lot. You may be able to take, like, a pot shot with a rocket launcher or a homing missile or something. But if that guy actually gets alerted, uh, you will trigger that helicopter to come over and fight. Now, here is probably one of the sneakiest data chips. Uh, what we want to do is jump in the air and wait for this guy to fly by and cut him up when he gets close. Kind of just, you know, fall to pieces. Wings still flapping around, which is kind of weird. Then when the rest of him explodes, you can see he actually drops the next data storage. So that's probably one, again, that you're going to miss. We've also got a hostage you can see at the end of the roof. This guy walking towards us, so I want to take him out. Okay, and an item back here as well. If I can open it. <laughs> there we go. Get some extra BP. It's always worth it. Okay, so this is another one of those hostage situations that you basically can't just walk in and stealth. So we're going to have to use another one of our EM grenades. Thankfully, we're full up on them, so that's good. Also got a heavier cyborg walking around, so I kind of want to wait for him to turn around a bit. There we go. All right, and then we've got to make a well-placed throw here. It's also worth mentioning, uh, one of these guys does have a left arm we're going to need to snag. So let's go ahead and get it. Get off. All right, so while the other guy's stunned, there's also a slider that's going to come up. I guess we can go ahead and do that. 
Nope. <laughs> he threw a grenade. I wasn't quite expecting that. Oh, man. <laughs> I hate when they're get off camera. Uh, again, the camera is probably like the biggest complaint about this game, and I think it is actually legitimate. Uh, a lot of times enemies will be off screen and you can't really see what they're doing. I want to get this guy away from the hostage. I don't want him to get accidentally hit or anything. Alright, and that got him down. Thankfully, the hostage is still alive and well over here, so let's go ahead and set him free. Thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Don't let those fuckers get away with this, okay? Thank you so much! And it turns out he actually just kind of runs over here and stands, so... Uh, I don't know. Let's take a swipe. Really, Raiden? Ripping off people's clothes? Well, it's not like that's what I meant to do. I mean, come on, guys. You're on my side, right? Raiden, what are you doing? You left Maverick for this? Oh, okay. What about Kevin? Come on, man. You understand. Raiden, what the hell, man? This is your idea of a good time? Stripping dudes in public? I didn't know you were into that. Right. Sorry. Sorry. It was an accident. Hey, I'm not here to judge. But next time, find someone consenting and do it on your own damn time. Hmm, so he's not really on our side either. Courtney, come on, man. Raiden, what the hell do you call that? Uh, I, it was a, a... Sick, Raiden. I call it sick. <sighs> you can save your own damn data. No, oh, wow, she won't even save. Doctor, believe it or not, actually has nothing to say about this. Wolf does, though. For all his achievements, man is still capable of such depravity. Still driven by such cruel impulses. Wolf, I... I know it is your instinct to test the limits. Still, I find it... pitiful. Ouch. <laughs> man, that one hurts. <laughs> you know, the other guys are just like, come on, what the heck, man? But Wolf is like, I find that pitiful. It's like, oh, I, I kind of feel like I let him down now. So yeah, he'll just kind of stand here and shiver. I gotta be, I, you know, it's gotta be pretty cold up here on the rooftops in Denver. So, well, we'll just leave him here. We can't do anything more to the poor guy. You cannot proceed any further via the rooftops. There is a freight railroad underground. The elevator ahead will take you to it. And uh, at this point, basically everyone's moved on. It's just business as usual, so... You know, you can get little reactions like that. There are things in other Metal Gear games, of course, that you can do that with as well. You know, especially in Metal Gear Solid 2, you know, the whole you can save your own data thing is kind of, a, you know, again, a running gag if you do something, like, really not good. <laughs> Alright, so we can cut our way into the elevator here, and this part's pretty fun. We can actually cut the supports away. And we'll just do this. <laughs> we can get really fast spitting there. And then we fall all the way down to the bottom. This must be the railroad. It would appear so. Likely part of Denver's old system. This city was a major transport hub in the early years of freight trains. This particular line appears to have been abandoned some time ago. It was originally constructed to transport supplies to an underground factory. But now, it seems even the electrical system is no longer functioning. Yeah, it's pitch black in here. As a cyborg, I trust this is not a serious concern. So they don't really give you a hint. If you really need it, you can call Wolf and he'll tell you, but... <laughs> well, okay, also there's a manual pop-up. I didn't know that. I'm kind of disappointed, actually. I thought the game left it to yourself. But yes, you can, of course, use AR, and that'll give us uh, kind of what's around. Pretty neat little section. Uh, I kind of like this idea, actually. The problem is AR goes away with basically everything you do. If you attack, you lose it. If you ninja run, you lose it. Uh, if you go into, like, a cardboard box or something, you lose it. So, you know, you kind of have to keep toggling it on after you do something. I still have not noticed you. Do not expose yourself. And, of course, we've got some Mastiffs patrolling the place. Uh, these guys are pretty easy to stealth kill. Uh, but you can't really use ninja run to get on them fast or anything, but, you know, they're spread out far enough that it doesn't really matter. And, of course, the killing animation is kind of weird when it's pitch black and you literally can't even see it. 
but <laughs> you know it also it kind of makes it a little hard sometimes to get a Zendatsu in the right place but at least you can still see the big red box the problem is you can't quite see where you're aiming so you just kind of have to feel your way around and of course uh, if you do get into combat it will sort of light up the area around you a little bit since obviously we can't use AR when we're in combat since like I said before swinging your sword causes AR to go away so they do give you at least a little bit, you know, they kind of give you the benefit of letting you see the area around you. Otherwise, it's basically complete black. There is actually an achievement or a trophy if you're on the PS3 uh, for getting through this entire section without ever turning on your AR. And it's pretty easily doable if you have a, you know, just like turn up the brightness on your TV. That'll pretty much get it and you can see just fine. All right, so once we've uh, taken this guy, we can actually head back here. There's a data storage hidden back in the rubble. We've also going to have some uh, tripods up here on the ceiling. Uh, you can actually get around these if you're willing to like dump a couple of your rocket launcher ammo, which I am. I've got four, uh, but we can kind of, uh, it's pretty easy to see in the dark because they have the big red lights. So now we can take these out. We can take this one out. And for the last one, you don't actually have to uh, take him out if we get out our cardboard box. Turn back on AR so I can see where I am. And we can jump our way up here. And uh, if you run underneath them with a the box, they actually don't detect you. I guess they don't really search for movement. I guess they just, like, search for, you know, your heat signature or whatever. So you can just go through with a cardboard box and they don't even notice you. It's actually going to be useful in this little section up here. There is a maintenance shaft up ahead. Use it to return to the surface. I want to go ahead and take this guy out because there's actually a couple things to collect in this section. He actually got an alert because I ran into him there. <laughs> the alert was still going. I didn't think anything else spawned, and thankfully it didn't. Uh, so we want to head back around here, basically just around the corner from where we were before. And the next VR mission is sitting back here. That one's actually pretty well hidden. But, uh, you know, if you think to check all the corners and everything, you'll probably run across that one by accident. We can also head back around to uh, the far side. In fact, let's go ahead and do a little ninja run. And you can see we've actually got our next humanoid gecko. And now this one is kind of tricky because they don't actually light up the area. Uh, you kind of just have to fight like by feel. You can't really see what's going on. And he has some pretty quick attacks, so actually it's really easy to get hit. And uh, he does quite a bit of damage. There we go. So once we split them up, we can see. I think I actually did take out both of them, yeah. And uh, you don't get quite as much BP for that one. You actually get 234, which is a strange number. They also don't drop the big hollow chips like they did the last time, so... May not actually be worth it, but still fun to do, I guess. We can also pick up a red phosphorus grenade here. And uh, we can really just sneak by this guy because there's actually... Uh, especially if you look on the radar and you can see on the ceiling there, there's a lot of dwarf gecko around. So uh, I like to just sneak by in a cardboard box here. And hopefully I didn't wait too long, because that guy will eventually turn around and start heading back. And we'll just press that and then quickly make our way out before we get noticed. Raiden, it would appear your only way forward is to return to the surface. You will exit into an evacuated commercial district. Security is heavy, but you need not worry about collateral damage when engaging the enemy. About time. Finally, I can cut loose. Proceed to the right from the exit. You will find a stairway on your right. Those stairs lead to a shortcut to World Marshal Headquarters. Do not be distracted by the advertisements. You are not here as a tourist. Sure. I'll just buy a quick souvenir or two for Rose and that'll be it. Raiden, we must hurry. Remind me to teach you about sarcasm sometime. I understand your attempts at humor. I simply do not find them entertaining. You know, Wolf could be a bit nicer. At first he talks about our depravity for slicing up the hostage's clothes, and now he's it's like, oh, I recognize that you were being sarcastic. I just thought it was stupid. <laughs> you, you could be a little nicer, buddy. I did kind of save your life, you know, and freed you from Desperado and all that. So, of course, our next VR mission over here in the corner. Right. You have almost reached World Marshal Headquarters. 
So at this point, I like to just take the fight under this bridge. Uh, you can see, obviously, there's a grot up there. Uh, we're also actually going to have another left-hand guy. Oh, the holding missile is nice. Uh, we got another guy with the left hand here, so let's go ahead and collect that. <laughs> I don't think I actually sliced through before I collected it. That was weird. Ah. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you're pretty decent at those counterattacks, that's actually a really handy way to take those guys out. Here, there are enemies on the overpass. I suggest cutting the road supports. That should bring it down. Alright, so of course now we can bring down the supports to take this thing down. And basically just take it out like any other grod. They're, they're going to start appearing as normal enemies pretty often. Uh, you know, not like super common or anything, but this definitely is not the last grod we're going to have to fight. So the, the downside to this is that the battles with them do kind of take a little while because they've got a decent amount of health. Especially if they decide to, to just slide around a lot like this. And down he goes. That's, again, probably a B, because I think I missed a Zendatsu in there. Uh, time should be okay, though, maybe. <laughs> if it'll pop up, there it goes. Okay, yeah, B. Like I said, ratings are gonna start going down a little bit. Enemy ahead, Raiden. Avoid fighting if you can. Mostly just because it starts getting harder and harder to do with no damage, you know, especially when there's a lot of, like, machine gun fire and stuff. Alright, so we've got this section here that we want to try to do, like, uh, stealth-wise. I can make my way up these stairs without that guy noticing. This guy's actually got a left hand for us. Okay, and now the other two guys are basically going to line up really nice for us here if we can get to our AR display. There we are. So they're basically just going to, you know, walk right behind each other. So let's go ahead and take out the one in the back. Then, okay, I was actually a little bit close, but I still made it. Also, cut up the police car in the process. Okay, so at the base of the stairs here, we've got a blade mode chest, which actually contains our next life upgrade, so we definitely want to grab that. I think there's also an item box back around here. Uh, probably nothing too important. I think just a grenade. Yeah, just a grenade, so don't really need it, but, you know, it's worth the BP, I suppose. Alright, so this is kind of a big, somewhat memorable section. I'm just going to go ahead and say, if you get in a fight, do not break that little item cart over there. We are actually going to need it for something. Now, we're going to have these guys kind of patrolling the stairs. The two up top that are furthest away will stay up there, so we don't need to worry about them too much. I do kind of want to do this with stealth. I don't want to get in a fight and risk taking that thing out, and I also would like to uh, really easily be able to get that guy's left hand. So it can be a little tricky, though, because that guy does just stand there and look out over this whole thing. So I'm going to kind of wait for this one to turn around. Probably just stay in the box as we move up. Because that gives us kind of a lower profile. Alright, so then we can jump up. Do this. The, the problem with this is you start sliding down the stairs when you try to do stealth kills on them. So I may want to just hop into the box real quick here just in case. Okay. Alright, at this point we should be able to get behind this guy. There we go. And take him out. Now, with the ones up top, it actually doesn't really matter if you get there without being detected, because you just get in the battle anyway. Oh, okay, well, he kind of missed, but I would really kind of like to show it here. This is a pretty good chance to, since everyone's just kind of standing around. Once he fires the rocket, you can actually cut it in blade mode. You can see the two halves went through there. 
So unfortunately, that's never really practical because you kind of have to like stand still and wait when you really would rather be charging them to attack anyway. But it's just kind of a cool thing you can do. <laughs> it's like, I'd really like to get that Zendatsu. Alright, I think there's just one other guy with the machine gun up here as well as the uh, Fenrir that we're going to get introduced to here. It's basically exactly the same as Blade Wolf that we fought in the first uh, in File R01, except obviously a lot weaker. So it's got basically the same attacks, but uh, it's really easy to just kind of charge and get combos on. It will jump back quite a bit, but you know, it just does all the same stuff. It also uh, kind of gets juggled a lot easier than he did. And uh, the chainsaw has been replaced with the railgun, which he can fire if he spins long enough away from you. But, um, you know, as long as you just kind of stick close to him, it won't really matter. Alright, so came away with an A there because of the combo, which is fine. And uh, now we're going to head back down. This is where we're going to start collecting some items and stuff. First off, I just saw this item box. Let's go ahead and get it. Oh, some more BP. I guess I'll take it. 500 is always good. All right, so this is where we're going to use the item cart. This is probably one of the best hidden data storages, I think. Uh, what we're going to have to do is actually, uh, also, by the way, Thunderbolt Cafe, which I definitely like. I think it's very fitting. Uh, we can jump up here on this sign, and then if we do this just right, we can jump up here, do some attacks, and you can see there's actually a data storage chip right there. So that it really stretches the limits of how far and high you can jump. And uh, I guarantee if you missed one, that's probably the one you missed. All right, so now that we've got that, we can head back up the stairs. There's also one more thing to check out before we proceed forward. Some story stuff is going to start taking... Uh, taking hold here in the next section, but yeah, we got another poster over here on the right. So of course, let's go ahead and slash That's my boy. <laughs> And Kevin approves. So I guess this makes up for you know taking the clothes off that dude 